Hi, I'm Paul Battaglia, and this is section 1.10, Mathematical Modeling and Variation. We'll start the chapter talking about the modeling, and then we'll progress into the variation part. As I go through the class with my students and we look at some of the regression models that I'd like them to work with, I think it's really important that as a teacher I circulate around and monitor their calculator use. It's really been a problem where I've assumed in the past that they had um, really tremendous knowledge and fluency with their calculator, when in reality they don't. There's a lot of steps and sequences that they have to, to follow. So I think it's important that they understand not only what they're doing, but how to do it, and to kind of make it more of a repetitive action so that the concepts that we're talking about are a lot easier for them to grasp. I'm joined today by Gabe and Brittany, and I know, Brittany, you're going to talk to us a little bit about the, the idea of accuracy in a regression model, right? Yes, um, so a lot of teachers will brush off the correlation coefficient and just have their students uh, show it in their calculator and write it down, right. but won't really discuss what it means. Right. Um, and it's really important, especially in if you read papers and mm -hmm. see a model, you want to sure. know how well does it fit the data that was right. um, produced. And what I found is that a lot of students have trouble uh, with plus and minus one, okay. they're fine mm -hmm. with positive one being a positive correlation, okay. but negative one, they assume a negative means it's bad. Mm -hmm. So just making sure to tell the students plus or minus one are great correlation stuff. coefficients, while anything that's zero or really close to zero is not, really yeah, right. yeah. Not you know, and you yeah, mentioned before too, and, yeah, and you know, I think, I think what's important too is from a teacher standpoint, let's not lose sight of the fact that what we're also trying to do is make sure that our students are, have that career readiness, you know, and so mm -hmm. you mentioned it exactly. before, you know, if you go on to become uh, a statistician or a nurse or anybody who's going to be investigating papers of some sort mm -hmm. and, and looking at data and saying, you know, if, is this data worth anything? I think, mm -hmm. yeah, it starts with the correlation coefficient. So I think that's, that's really important. Mm -hmm. So then the next progression in the, ch in the section here is to, for us to go from the modeling to variation. And there's, there's a tons of examples as we go through the variations of, of real life applications. So Gabe, talk to us a little bit about, let's say, direct variation. Okay, so a nice example of direct variation, I don't know, a lot of students like food. So something that I like to do is maybe the example where we're calculating the price of frozen yogurt. So okay. normally frozen yogurt sold by the ounce. So what I can have them do is I can give them a couple pieces of information, the price of a bowl of frozen yogurt and the weight of the frozen okay. yogurt, and have them somehow work with that I tell them that it's a direct variation, and they can go ahead and compute the variation constant. And, and you know, so they're, so they're looking at one, one uh, quantity going up, another mm -hmm. quantity going up as yep. well. Mm -hmm. um, Brittany, talk to us a little bit about the importance of the actual constant of variation in terms of units, right? A lot of students, they don't mm -hmm. think of it that way. Mm -hmm. Um, again, uh, students forgetting the units and just saying it's negative seven, okay. um, needing to know, well, negative seven, what doll, you know, are you losing money right, per right. minute? Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. um, or are you getting gallons per hour? Okay. We're right. talking Filling yogurt, some kind of volume. Yeah, dollars yogurt, per ounce. Yeah, right, dollars okay. per ounce, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so see, it's important that we make sure our students have that contextual um, background as well, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So then we go from direct to inverse variation, right? And so mm -hmm. this, is, this is somewhat new to students because on one hand you have the direct variation where you have both quantities doing the same thing, and here we go and we talk about inverse variation mm -hmm. where one is going up and, and the other going down or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So um, do you guys have a, a good example of how we can maybe you know, bring that real world uh, application in? Um, I have an example that I use in my class where uh, the uh, miles per hour of a car, okay. the speed of a car versus how much snow is on the ground. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So as there's more snow, right. you can't go as fast. Uh, that's easy, easy too, I think. It's yeah. really simple. Yeah. You know, they can all relate whether they drive or not. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they get that yeah. kind of yeah. example, you know. So then we get into the more complex variations. We have uh, combined variation, joint variation. We have uh, nth power variation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, Gabe, you want to take any one of those and talk about them? Yeah, there was a nice nth power variation example in the book just relating the radius of a circle to its area. Okay. So that's something where we're talking the area of a circle is proportional to the right. radius squared. squared. Right. And then, and then I think the text does a great job also of talking about combined variation when it gets into ideal gas laws and mm -hmm. things of that state, mm -hmm. you know, that, that sort And there's of plenty well. of applications in the sciences and engineering. You know, and, and that's yeah. again, career readiness, right? Mm -hmm. Making sure the students have seen enough so that they don't really quite know what they may want to go into at this point, but at least it kind of plants the seed, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. 
Uh, and then finally, in the section, we're going to end up with uh, joint variation, right? And so mm -hmm. there are some really good uh, business applications as well, right, Brittany? Yeah, the interest rate, um, right. because it's going to come up again in uh, following chapters as compound interest rate, but just getting them to see those variables. Yeah, even though they're seeing before. simple interest right now, they're seeing multiple variables, variables moving at the same time, mm -hmm. which, which is important. So as you finish up section 1.10, understand that there is a lot to cover, but it's, it's all really, really important for the students to see the connections between the math that we're doing and the stuff that's out there in the real world. And it's not contrived stuff. It's, it's legitimate stuff that, that these students would have, uh, I think, a lot of experience with as well. Mm -hmm. So I hope these tips have been helpful and that you find much success in section 1.10.